Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to show you how I got this beautiful bubble effect in UV resin on my serving boards. It was first inspired by a lovely lady called Alison Merritt who has her channel Thinking Outside the Box where she makes lots of beautiful uh, jewellery with polymer clay and UV resin. I wanted to use that idea to implement into larger pieces like these serving boards which I'm using today. So if you'd like to see what she makes please head over to Thinking Outside the Box but if you'd like to see the serving boards please stay here and stay tuned. <laughs> Before we begin, I just wanted to take a moment to explain why in this video I'm using two different kinds of resin. The first resin which I will be using is a UV resin, which is really fabulous. It cures under a UV ultraviolet light in about two minutes, which makes it such fun to do because you get a quick result. The only problem with it is that it's not food safe. So I'm making a serving board today and I need my... Uh, the finish to be safe to be near food which is why uh, after I've finished the first part I'm going to cover it with two-part epoxy resin which is one which is safe for incidental food contact. If you're planning to use this method on something that won't be coming into contact with food just disregard the two-part epoxy resin and just carry on using your UV resin to do the top coat. First of all, I'm protecting my board. It's a bamboo board and I've protected it with a plastic bag on the end that I'm not going to be working on because I know how messy I am. And I'm also masking the back of it with aluminium tape. I think any good job is a well-prepared job. It's all in the preparation. You save yourself so much time if you take a lot of time and effort at this stage in masking the back it really does save you time with your clear up at the end if you haven't got resin dripping all over the back i've just smoothed it down at the back on the edges with a lolly stick just to make sure it's really pressed down firmly and now i'm just cutting out the off the excess with a craft knife Here I'm just making sure that there's no little excess bits of tape sticking on the sides. I'm brushing down the sides of the board with my thumb and then just folding those tiny little bits over at the back and then pressing down again with the lolly stick. Then we've got a lovely clean edge. So my board's all prepared and we're ready for the next step which is to do the lovely bubble effect in the UV resin. And to get the bubble effect you obviously need to use bubbles. So we're using dish soap and I've got some warm water in a tub. Just add in some more dish soap there just to get some extra bubbles. And I'm going to put the lid on and give it a good shake. Make sure you put the lid on properly and don't get yourself covered in water like I just did. So there's your bubbles ready and I'm just going to put them out of the way for a few minutes while I just get the next bit done. And what I've done, you can't actually see, but I've drawn a line on that board really faintly so I knew where I wanted my uh, resin to go up to. Uh, but yeah, you can't really see it. But it doesn't matter. I'm just I've poured on some of the UV resin now and I'm just manipulating it with a lolly stick again just to get all the way up to that line. And when I've got up to the line and done the fiddly bit, I'll just use my fingers to spread the resin about so it's covering all that corner of the board nicely. Okay, so I just kept spreading it around until it was all done. Made sure I got inside all the nooks and crannies and right round the inside of that circle and down the edges. It was actually a lot easier once I put the lolly stick down and just used my fingers. Here I'm adding just a tiny bit more of the UV resin just because I found it was just a bit patchy. Now 
Now it's one of my favourite parts. It's applying the bubbles. I just love how this process just makes such an amazing textured effect in the resin. It really, it's quite addictive actually. So anyway, I'm just using my hand to scoop the bubbles out of the tub without being careful not to get any water, just the bubbles. And I'm just kind of letting them drop off my hand onto the resin. I'm not touching the resin, I'm just letting the bubbles fall onto it. And trying to let them get around the edges and inside the hole as well because that will all imprint onto the resin and it will just look fantastic. Once the bubbles are on, I put it underneath my lamp for two minutes. It's a really good good lamp actually because the bottom of it slides out so that you can kind of make a bridge out of it in a way. I've, I've propped it up with tiles so that I can just have the board underneath and then it doesn't matter if the thing you're um, shining your light on is bigger than the light, if that makes sense. It's had its two minutes, so all I need to do now is just take it out from under the light and blow all of those bubbles off and then put it back underneath the lamp for another two minutes. Oh, by the way, that tile that you can see, all the only reason I'm using that is to, so that it's not laid flat on, on the surface because otherwise the resin from the board might stick to the surface that I'm laying it on, so it's just to prop it up a bit. I'm just drying it out here with my little hair dryer just to get rid of any excess moisture before I start to paint it. It was quite hard to capture the texture of the bubbles but you can just about see I think the how amazing the result is. It really is fantastic and obviously it's going to look even better once it's painted. I'm just using my emery board just to really, really lightly sand it because you do tend to get odd little bits sticking up further than all the rest of it, which will kind of stick out of your resin when it's finished if you haven't got rid of it first. I noticed at this stage that I had a big blue fingerprint on it. You can't see it very well in the <laughs> but believe me, it was there and it was going to annoy me if I left it there. I don't know how I do it, I really don't. So what I did was I put a little bit more resin on and more bubbles on just to extend the pattern and cover up the mark. Using a fine tipped brush just to paint on the gold acrylic paint um, just up to the edge of the resin and I'm being really careful not to get the paint onto the wood. I only want it on the resin and once that bit's done I will change to a thicker brush and the next part of the painting will be a lot quicker. It's just this first bit is quite time consuming and it's if you want a nice result it is best to take your time with this. Now I'm taking a much thicker brush and I'm painting on the gold much more quickly because it, it doesn't need so much precision so it is really quick and I'm kind of stippling it on to get it into all the little bubble shapes. I'm using the green now and I didn't want a definite li line between the gold and the green so what I did was I started applying the green paint over the top of that thick gold band and started to blend it in really um, carefully towards the edges of the green and the gold just to blend them together and then as I went along I got um, more green with less gold and then just green and then now here, I'm going too fast, I can't speak fast enough, and now I'm adding some blue 
into the green to make a darker green and then just blue so it's all blending and getting darker and darker as it gets towards the corner. I'm just adding a few patches of gold just to kind of break it all up a little bit and make it a little bit more random. I just like to have a few little patches in there of the gold. And now I'm just going to splash a few little puddles of water on top of the paint. It just helps the colours to merge together a little bit. And then what I like to do is just quickly dry that with the hairdryer. And I will also, if you just see, I've tilted it up so that the water doesn't run into the gold and it just runs downwards. As it dries, you can start to see it really coming to life because the light's reflecting off all those little indentations and it's just making it look so sparkly and magical. I really love it. I find it quite mesmerising looking at it. Once this was completely dry, what I did do was I gave it another coat of the UV resin, just, just like I did before, just the resin, no more bubbles or anything. And that's just so that I could sand away more of the little bits that were sticking out but I lost the film of that bit so I had to just tell you what I did <laughs> so this is how it looked after the second coat of UV resin and I know it doesn't look too great at the moment uh, it will do the magic will appear once that um, coat of epoxy resi resin is on next but the reason I did this is because I wanted to give it another bit of sanding with my emery board and I couldn't do that without the second coat of UV resin on because I would have got rid of all the paints and I didn't want to sand any of my paint off. So I gave it a quick coat of the UV resin and now I'm just sanding it down very very gently just to take off those bits that are protruding a little bit too much and it will make it much easier to get a good coverage with my two-part epoxy in the next step. I know what you're all thinking now. You're thinking, right, if you're going to pour on two-part epoxy resin now, how are you going to stop it getting on the board? How are you going to mask that wiggly line accurately? Well, I'm going to tell you my tip, and it's a top tip. It's going to be the best tip you've seen all day. This tip is to use a liquid latex. This is good because you can just paint it on. It will ruin your brush. Use an old brush. <laughs> but you can paint it right up to the edge of your wiggly line, and it will mask the wood and protect it from any resin. Right, I gave my bottle a really good shake and I'm just pouring some on directly onto the board. I'm not bothering with a palette and I'm going to use an old brush because it will ruin your brush really unless you manage to find a way to get it clean but it does ruin your brush. Don't use a good one. And I'm pushing it into the shape of the line with the brush and it's a really good way of masking Anything that's not a straight line, because usually we use tape with resin, don't we, um, to use our to mask with, or even petroleum jelly. But this I've found is the very best way that I've found anyway to mask a wiggly line. And like I said, way too much, but don't matter. It'll all just peel off. Now, if you're going to do this the right way, you will leave this for a good couple of hours to dry out before you pour on your resin. But I don't always do things the right way because I'm too impatient. What I actually did was I dried it with the hairdryer. Um, it's probably not what the experts would recommend. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I just make it up as I go along. Uh, anyway... I dried it 
with my hair dryer and it was fine. It worked. So it's up to you. You can do it the right way or you can copy off what I do and <laughs> do it the wrong way. So the latex mask is dry and now it's time to apply my two part epoxy resin. And first of all, what I've done is I've propped up the supports underneath so that it's not level. Normally we like to make things level, but I want this tipping um, so that the end of it is tipping downwards so that the resin runs away from that gold edge, not the other way, if that makes any sense. So I've mixed 40 millilitres of my Elichem's um, Total Cast resin in my silicon jug, which is great because it stops me uh, from throwing away plastic cups because it just peels right off when it's cured. I love my silicon jugs. Uh, yeah, so I've mixed it really, really well. And I can now I can pour it on. Now, what I'm doing is I'm pouring it on the area that's not near the edge of that gold line because I want to be able to very carefully push the resin with an old paintbrush towards the edge of the gold line. The reason for that is because the less resin you get on the latex, latex mask, it's hard to say that, the latex mask, the easier it will be to take the latex off afterwards. Maybe now you're thinking, well, if she's going to just push it carefully to the edge, what's the point in having the latex on in the first place? Well, there is a lot of point, and that is because um, that the resin tends to have a mind of its own, and if it, if it wants to flow the way you don't want it to flow, if it wants to do it, it'll do it. And once it's on that wood, if there's no masking there... Even if you wipe it off, once the resin has gone on the wood, you're going to have a shiny mark there. And even if it's just the tiniest bit. And so that is why I've masked the, the wood, even though I'm trying not to get any paint, um, any resin on the mask. <sighs> I seem to spend my life wondering if I'm making any sense or not. I'm just going to show at the top some of the lovely comments I got on the last video because, you know, you make me so happy with your lovely comments. It really, really makes it all worth it when I can see that I've made a difference or inspired somebody. So thank you for your feedback. It really does mean a lot to me. It's three hours later and the resin is still very, uh, it's not runny. Uh, if I moved the board, it wouldn't drip off, but it's still very tacky. You wouldn't want to stick your finger in it because it would leave a horrible mark. <laughs> but there I am just testing it with a lolly stick. And I'm going to go for it with the taking the latex off it's one of those things it is a little bit of trial and error with taking off masking and getting it off right just at the right time you just you don't want to leave it till the resin's gone hard because you won't get your masking off if the resin has gone over the edge of it you want to wait until it's just stopped running about all over the place and then you can take your masking off uh, it took me a while just here just to get it started but once you've got it started it starts to peel off easy and the way I peel it off is I kind of pull it in the direction um, you can't see it on this bit but I start to pull it towards the actual resin um, and it just if there's any bits of um, wet resin on there if you're pulling it over the wet resin if this makes sense it won't go onto the wood it will go back onto the resin so that's why i'm trying to do it in that direction but you, you can't really tell 
You probably won't know what on earth I'm talking about. Just ignore me. <laughs> that mark that you can see that's been left by the latex, don't worry about that. You just put the hairdryer on it, dry it out. It's just the moisture that's come out of the latex. It's fine. So don't panic. So I've taken off the masking now. You can see that mark from the latex is gone now. It's all dried out. And I'm just using a tea bag, which I've had in some hot water, and rubbing it all over the wood. And it just gives it a little bit of an extra richness. It's a very subtle difference, but i just like to bring that little bit of extra colour to the wood in a way that's food safe without any chemicals. I'm going to use this wood oil and wax now and I'm going to rub it in all over the wood and it really nourishes it and gives it a lovely finish. It just protects it as well but it looks lovely. And this wood oil and wax is designed for worktops and serving boards, chopping boards, anything connected with food so it's perfectly safe to use on your serving board. After an hour I'm just going to wipe off all the excess and it will be finished. So there we have the finished piece. I think you'll agree it looks really, really fantastic the way the light shines off all those little indentations. I'm really pleased with how it turns out, turned out. In fact, I loved doing it so much I've made two others as you can see. The pinky one and the blue one. I can't decide which colour I like best. Maybe you could let me know in the comments what you think is the best colour. So if you liked watching the video, if you enjoyed it and you found it inspirational, please remember to click subscribe and ring that bell so you get a notification straight away next time I upload a video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.